What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in this video, we're gonna start a multiple part series modeling out a gingerbread house inside of SketchUp. So I haven't figured out exactly how this is gonna go. I think it would be kind of fun if you guys modeled some stuff out as well. So if you wanna follow along and use some of the principles that we're using in this tutorial, feel free to do that. I'd love to see what you can create. But in any case, this is gonna be a great way to go over some of the basics of working with SketchUp as well. Well, so it's a great review for those of you that want to review the basics as well. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in this first video, I'm going to talk about how to rough out our gingerbread house itself. And then probably we're going to get a little further into modeling out the different decorations and things that are going to go on to it in the next video. And then finally, in the third one, we'll use our tools to kind of decorate everything out and finalize our house. But for this one, we just want to create the model of our house. So to start off, I'm going to erase out my default model. And I'm going to start by drawing in the front... I'm going to start by roughing out the front face of this house. So to do that, I'm going to use the line tool by tapping the L key. Then I'm just going to click on my center point here, and I'm going to draw a line that's six inches. I'm going to draw a six inch line across the red axis, and then we'll draw a four and a half inch line up. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill this in using the rectangle tool. So I'm just tapping the R key. And then you probably didn't even need to do that, but we're going to go ahead and draw this line up. And we want the overall height to be like seven and a half inches. So then we can just draw edges to fill this in. And then we can erase out our extra using the erase tool. So just by tapping the E key. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to give this a little bit of thickness because these pieces would have thickness in the real world. So to do that, we're going to use the push-pull tool. So just tap the P key. We're just going to mouse over this and single click. And we're going to give this a, a thickness of 3 eighths of an inch. So that's going to be the thickness of our gingerbread pieces. And then we can go ahead and select the whole thing, right click on it, and we can click on make group. And for now, I'm not going to make this a component. We can talk about that a little bit later, but um, because we're gonna make a copy of it on the back side and the front of my gingerbread house is gonna look different than the back, for now, I'm gonna leave this as is. I may decide to change my mind on that a little bit later. But at the moment, what we wanna do is now we wanna model out our side walls. So, and I'm gonna have this have an overall length of 12 inches. So what I want to do is I want to start by creating a guide. So I want to create a guide um, using the tape measure tool. So I'm going to click on the tape measure tool and notice with the tape measure tool there's a little plus next to my uh, cursor icon. That means we're in create guide mode and what that means is that means that now we can create a dotted line or a guide inside of our model. So I'm just going to click on the tape measure tool um, make sure that that plus that little plus is showing if it's not tap the control key in order to turn create guide mode on We're just going to click once on this point We're going to move our mouse and we're going to type in a value of 12 inches or just 12 And so now I'm just going to take this and I'm going to use the move tool in order to create a copy of this object Over here, so we're just going to select this tap the M key and then click on this corner and tap the control key in order to turn copy mode on. So now what we have here is we've got a front wall and a back wall. And depending on how realistic you wanna be with the way this is modeled out, um, so now we're gonna model out our side walls. And so if you remember what we had before is we had a wall right here with a thickness of 3 eighths of an inch. So what I wanna do is I wanna draw a little edge here that's gonna be 3 eighths of an inch. And I wanna draw this up until I intersect with this curve. And so you can see how when I do this, what this means is this means that I'm gonna be able to create a face that follows the slope of this roof. So we've got this kind of created, and I'm just gonna use the push-pull tool to extrude that to right here. So now we have one of our two sidewalls created, and it has that thickness of 3 eighths of an inch. And because these are grouped, um, we don't have to worry about picking these up in our selection. We can just triple click in order to select all connected edges in this object and we can right click on it and we can go ahead and we can click make group and so what I've done is I've grouped all of this geometry 
in here and um, I've made it so that it won't merge with anything else or anything like that. And then we're just going to use the move tool in copy mode and note that if you want this to be the same on both sides, um, if your wall decorations are going to be the same on both sides, you could also make this a component. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the same thing where I use the move tool in copy mode. So tap the M key and click on this corner. Then move your mouse along the red axis and tap the control key. And we're just going to create this copy out in space. So not up against our wall. Because if we were to make it up against our wall, the slope of this object isn't right. So what we want to do is I'm going to use the scale tool to flip this. You could also right click on it and you could select the option for flip along an axis. I always like to use the scale tool just because I can see what it's doing, but I'm just going to tap the S key, single click on this point, and then move my mouse this way, and I'm going to type in a value of negative 1. And so when I type in a value of negative 1, what that does is that flips this along the axis, so now this slope is correct. And then all I have to do is just use the move tool in order to move this in place. And you can hold the shift key to lock this on the red axis if you want to. So now I have my front two walls and I have my side walls. Well now what I want to do is I want to model out my roof. And so there's a couple different ways that we could do this. In this situation what I'm going to do, um, so really there's two ways that we could do this. So we could use the rectangle tool to draw a rectangle across here and then give it some thickness. And then we could extrude this down. So you can see how that's really easy to do, but there is going to be some work you're going to have to do on the top in order to get this line to align properly. So that's kind of up to you how you want to do that. Um, so this would be a good way to do this if we wanted to put like a piece of icing or something in the middle here. What I want to do instead is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw a line starting from this corner perpendicular to this edge. So you can see how what I can do is I can single click on this corner with the line tool in order to set a base point and then I can inference over here to a perpendicular um, edge. So I'm going to type in a value of 3 eighths of an inch and so I'm going to move my mouse until I get this perpendicular inference off of this face. So you can see how you can tell that it's perpendicular because it turns this purple color. And I'm just going to draw this so that it's past this top point. For right now. And so then what I can do is I can just draw a line straight up from this edge in order to fill this in and I can erase out this extra. And so then we can take this and we can extrude it back using the push pull tool. So you can see how the nice thing about the way that we've done this right here is this is going to be a closed in roof edge. So we've kind of filled in this angle and we've also got the proper thickness in here. And then you could also extrude this out a little bit if you want this to overhang. So maybe you want this to overhang like we'll call it a half inch or something like that. And then we're also going to use the push pull tool to make sure this overhangs on the front as well and we'll call this maybe a half inch as well so I'm just gonna push pull this on both sides whoops a half inch and so what we have is now we have our roof piece on here and it's overhanging our gingerbread house and I'm gonna go ahead and it looks like this for whatever reason erased out this edge on the bottom so I'm just gonna draw a line from here to here in order to heal that so now we're ready to take our roof piece and I'm going to triple click on it and we want to right click and we want to make that a component. So, so if I make this a component that means I only have to model out the stuff on one side and then we can automatically make that change on the other side. But we're going to go ahead and just call this roof piece. Make sure the box for replace selection with component is selected and we're going to click create. So then I'm just going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to make a copy using the move tool and we're just going to flip it using the scale tool. So I'm going to flip it to negative one and then I'll just move it back in place. So now what we have is we have the building blocks for our 
we have the building blocks for our gingerbread house. And one last thing we can do if we want to is let's go ahead and let's color all of this brown. So um, we're just gonna color all of the edges and faces in here brown. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply this to each one of the faces um, as opposed to applying this to the outside of the group. You could also click on the outside of the group. Um, that might make some weird stuff a little bit later though. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna apply this to all of the faces individually. So I'm just gonna double click Click in here, do a control A to select all, and I'm gonna apply this material. And you can see how, because the roof is a component, when I apply material to one of these, um, the material gets applied to the other one as well. So that's one of the time-saving things about working with components. And so that gives us a good start for our gingerbread house. So if you've ever made a gingerbread house, you know that you start with kind of the base object like this and then from there you um, you start adding decorations and icing and other thing like other things like that so in the next video what we're gonna do is we're gonna start modeling out our different decorations so using different shapes and that kind of thing we're gonna get those ready so that we can apply them in the final video so that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think about this idea. If you think that it's interesting at all, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.